school exam. Okay, today we are going to Shatteroo, which is about... 50 kilometres? It's about 45 minutes. 45 minutes normal speed, but I've got to take the sidecar, um, which would be about 45 mile an hour, I think, take it easy. Uh, Anna's taking the, the Land Rover with her little James motorcycle in the back. So we're going to Shatteroo Airport, which is a 1920s, I can't remember when it was built, was it Art Deco, isn't it? I think so. Art Deco Airport, which is nice. We'll hopefully get some filming of that. Uh, it's not commercial airport. It's a strange facility, lots of history taken over in the war. Anyway, we're going there because uh, we need to get a certificate for the bikes. Uh, it's called an 846A certificate. It's a, uh, uh, an import duty. We've got to pay some duty on the bikes to get them registered. And in the French bureaucracy, they want to actually see the bikes. We've sent through pictures and all sorts, but they want to physically inspect them. So I suspect this is going to be a very quick, oh yes, there, there are two bikes. I don't think it's going to be very thorough, but we've got to take a trip up there. So we're going to show you, we're going to show you a little bit of Chasseroux Airport. Okay, this is the old bike that's going up to be reviewed. And then we've got two-way radios. Anna's just doing the, you doing the coordinates, Anna? Doing sat nav. That's where we're going. Direction Regionale de Douane at the airport Marcel de Salt. And there's the baby James. Can you see a bit of reflection, I'm afraid. She's got no oil and petrol in because she's dry, hence why she's on her side. That's okay. So I expect we're going to have to take that out when we get there. My little homage to Anna. There, Fräulein Anna. So I've got a, a photograph of a, an American GI who during the Normandy invasion liberated one of these bikes from uh, one of the German defenders of northern France. Hence why he marked it up with a old glory on the front there and uh, then used that as his transport. So when this goes to events with us, it's it's got all the bags and I try and mimic that picture as closely as possible, which is why there's an American GI riding around on a German World War II motorcycle. I feel like I've driven, ridden, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles. It's not. 50 kilometres. Not pleasurable, is it? But we're here. I've not seen the aircraft. All the Art Deco buildings. We've just 
past them. So I'm going to go down and see if I can uh, see the office of the douaniers. Unfortunately not, no, we didn't get anywhere near flight side, did we? So. We were sat inside ages, just sitting and sitting. Lots of paperwork, lots of paperwork. Gave us a bit of a shock, didn't he? He came out and said, why is the engine number, the James, which is an old bike, but your baby James, like a 1940s bike. They didn't have the concerns they had today. So it has it has got his number stamped on the frame, but whoever did it in the factory stamped it round the wrong way. So instead of it reading A B C one two three, it read three two one C B A. But the numbers and the letters are all the same; they're just in the wrong order. And he didn't like that. He was saying, "But it's not the right number." I said, "It is. It's just round the wrong way." But you've got the paperwork. That's what's important. But we've got the paperwork. So uh, the next stage is what's known as FFVE, which I think is a voluntary organisation um, which helps with classic cars and motorcycles.
freeze to death on the sidecar. Do you have plans? No, we have no plans. Other than not, not to freeze. Sorry, yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> are you here for the, Are you not working tonight? <laughs> Thank you. I'm off today. Very good. And I'm off today. And as long as he's happy. He's he's happy. happy. Do you normally work Saturday? Yes. All day. So, I'm going to do a little bit on the decking uh, project today with some timber that I've got. Uh, let's show you what I plan to do. Uh, I've worked out that across my lengths, if I go 40 centres, so that means uh, a supporting joist every 40 centimetres, I'm going to need 14 along that whole length. So the job, I haven't got enough timber, I've, I've put in an order, or at least I've asked for a quote for an order, I'm waiting for that. Um, but I have got some longer lengths which I can reluctantly cut just to get started. So at the moment we've got, in terms of the fresh timber laid out, we've got these two, all I've done so far is just put up these two side pieces, which are uh, this piece here and this piece here. They're levelled but they're not anchored to the ground yet, I'm going to put in cemented uprights to support those but they are leveled off at the moment so if that's these two here um, all I need to do is just mark them out um, with my 40 80 120 160 200 and so on all the way up the length mark them on both sides coming from this point heading that way um, so the first thing I'm going to do is mark those mark these points and these points will be uh, where every joist appears very simple um, and i'm going to do i'm going to come in one and start at 40. so at 40 i'm going to put my first joist in like that and whatever that distance is let's say that's you know 300 uh, 3000 millimeters i'll do it exactly the same cut this end and come in 40 from the terminal point, so it'll be 520 because uh, it's 560 overall. Um, so I'll come in at 520 here and put my other uh, put my other joist in. Um, that will give me the assurance then that at least this is square. And then all I need to do then is, as I said before, is measure from that corner over to that corner, that corner for that corner, and just make sure that's sitting square. And then we can put in, not today, but uh, we can put in our other joists. So the job today is to measure from there to there, to mark our 40 centres on both pieces of timber and get these first two in. Um, if we've got time, I might put another two, uh, two in the centre there to make it nice and stiff. So let's get on with that, guys. So this piece of timber is going, by the way. It's just there for the time being. So, here we go, we're coming in and 40, 80, 120, let's just mark them up. Ah, oh, pencil's gone. There we go, just marking the centres. So all I need to do now is just to measure the distance from there, that point, to that point, the gap, and then that will be my first cut. The same distance will then be placed at that end, uh, coming in 40 from that end. Would you believe it? Grey clouds overhead, it's starting to rain. 
and it's going to rain quite heavily, I think. So it's typical. I'm going to see how much I can carry on doing, but uh, might have to abort due to the weather. Blast. It's eased off for now, so we're going to carry on going. Put a joist hanger at each end, uh, and then I'm going to show you a bit of a tip that I use to make sure that these land square with the top of these uh, main joists here. So let's get this, uh, let's get this in, but it'll be fine. Okay, bit of a tip just to make sure these the tops of these land square and of course these are all beaten up from the last installation so I'm going to need to land this square and then uh, bend these tangs over properly but I put a piece of timber temporarily just along the top and then let me show you when you lay this joist up against its supporting joist here, the surface will always be square, will always be flush, sorry, flush. And then we'll screw in the joist hangers and then lastly, we'll deal with these tangs here which have been bent before. So let's just pop that in. So just to remind you, this is going. I've just got to get rid of it uh, once I've got a platform up here. But this tip here, this is what I was showing you. Just a temporary piece of timber. Make sure that this joist lands square with this. Um, so you don't have to hold it up and you don't have to use uh, G clamps or anything. So all we're going to do now is square it off and uh, screw it in. Finally, take these off. What you get then is a lovely flush finish. So uh, that's the first one down. We've got, uh, what do we say? Is it 12 or 14 on each side? Not that I can cut them today, but uh, a fair few to go yet. So we're gonna do the one the other end now. I had to recheck my measurements just to make sure that was the same width as that because it was so out. Um, it's still clearly not square. I don't need to run a, a string line to it. I can see it's not square. That, this whole thing needs to go that way. And at the moment, this upright, which is going to be redundant, I'm going to replace it, is in the way. It's getting in the way of m this moving that way. So I'm going to take that out uh, and then shift it across. I've just taken that... Um, support up to shift this board along to get these square so i want to use the square just to make sure i'm nearly there and then do the diagonal trick to make sure i'm absolutely there but at the moment i'm still out this board here still needs to go this way and of course this old decking all of this old decking is still in the way so it's remarkable just how out of square it was so what i'm going to do is have a cup of tea get me energy levels up and then from this point onwards I'm going to where are we there to there I'm going to take this whole section away um, and that means then we can shift this over basically square it up I'll then true it up and uh, we'll be in a much better position this obviously is going to dictate the start of this is going to dictate everything off to the right 
So this needs to be perfect in order for the other stuff to follow it. You know, all the gaps down here need to be absolutely perfect um, with blocks. They all need to be equal. So I don't want to be making anything up later. And, and, you know, I'm using those three posts at the front because I've got to. Everything else can be changed. So what we're doing here is just putting in some noggins. Um, they go between the rafters and what they do is make the whole structure really stiff. And that's of course what we need to do. We want to avoid any bounce. I hate digging. I hate digging. This is for the posts, isn't it? Yeah, gonna go well over the top with posts. Gonna have one, two, three concreted posts on this side, off the, the same on that side. We have got more than that one, haven't we? You've just, you've done the ride on for most of it. Yeah. We're doing the trimming today. How are you feeling? You're feeling better, aren't you? Just to let everyone know. Yeah, I'm not barley. Yep. And the sun is shining? I'm not oh! I'm not sure if you can hear me now, the mower's going, but uh, we're putting in some uh, posts, some upright posts. Um, and we're going to sort of put three along here, three along the middle section, and then do the same on the other side, concreting them in. Look at the weather today, it's absolutely beautiful. The sky is blue, the lawns look amazing. Anyway, let's crack on, onto that time lapse. So that's my holes dug. I've got three along here, two along here, um, and I'm going to probably put in a breeze block on some concrete as well to give it some extra support. So I'm just going to cut the uprights now and uh, then uh, mix up some uh, concrete.
Okay, I've got my uh, nuts and bolts ready and my threaded bar all cut, ready to go in. I've got my holes ready to go and the concrete mixer is just over there in the distance mixing. So Charlie and Brambles, he's had his third dinner, isn't he? Third dinner today. Third dinner today. He's eating really well. And he eats oh, off the best china. Nice sunset. Oh, it's beautiful. This is what it's all about, isn't it? And, and the sun lands on that deck at night, so it's going to be fantastic when it's done. I can't wait to get it finished now. I've had enough of digging holes. So we're just having a beer, aren't we? Yeah. Left. A bit strong for me, really. It's six and a half percent. You can't really buy normal beer, sort of four percent beer over here. It's sort of six percent plus. And uh, the next video, no doubt, will be more decking to do and some adventures. So thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.